My preference if I was going to Oakland, California would just be to carry my own gun. But way number two is to outsource it and hire a hired gun. Gotta do what you gotta do. Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. And I'm your Saturday co-host, Stephanie Widener. And as John said, today's video comes to us from Oakland. BakerTargets.com is where I get the targets you see me shoot all the time on Active Self Protection Extra. They ship fast, their prices are great, and they have all kinds of targets, both for competitive shooting, defensive shooting, and fun too. Check them out. Here in Oakland, a reporter is, is interviewing the Chief of Violence Prevention for Oakland PD, and these two dudes in hoodies show up with some violence, and they pull guns and want the camera, that the news crew is using and try to hold them up. Well, they did think it had at least enough to get an armed security guard there. And that armed security guard draws his own gun, points his gun at them, and they decide to nope out of there. No shots were fired. Of course, they did not prevent violence this day and they did not catch these guys either. They scampered off and ran back down the hole they grew out of. Listen, I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area. In the 90s, we stayed out of Oakland. 2023? Nah, fam. Steph, let's just take a moment to savor the irony of the chief of violence prevention not being able to prevent violence in his own location. There's, there's a certain amount of schadenfreude in that, I think. Yeah, it's difficult not to enjoy it just, just a little bit, especially since Stone was hurt. We can giggle a little bit. Although the poor camera and knowing a little bit about what those cost, that was a hard, hard thing to see watch hit the, hit the street. Yeah, no kidding. And, and of course, <clears throat> if you're going to prevent violence, one of the first things you got to think about is, hey, we're in a transitional space. Maybe we should be significantly paying attention and maybe we should do this in a safer place where we don't have that. Now, a safer place might be not in Oakland. Um, you know, again, I lived in the San Francisco Bay Area as a kid and until I joined the Navy. And so I would film this in maybe San Jose or something, but definitely not in Oakland. And so, uh, you know, gosh, man, recognizing that, hey, when, when bad guys can attack us with an element of surprise, get away quickly, and we have valuables like a, oh, I don't know, $50,000 camera sitting here, this may be a bad idea to just be hanging out here not paying attention. Yeah, and, and it's kind of funny that we have the armed security guard there to kind of watch over everything, uh, although, some as people that film content in public places, it can be very difficult to watch what's going on around you. So, uh, so I think it was smart to have somebody kind of overseeing everything. Um, although I would have liked to see the the head of violence prevention uh, prevent the violence a little bit more once the bad guys' backs are to him. Well, I mean, that would have been <clears throat> maybe good because sometimes violence prevention means stopping the violence while it occurs. As our bad guys show up, I I'm gonna say this again, and, and I'm not trying to pick on him too much, right? But they pull guns and announce an armed robbery. Who has the chance to counter ambush here? It's not the armed security guard who it looks like the second bad guy went and saw and went and tried to you know, uh, get a hold of his stuff. It's not the cameraman who our a second bad guy is paying attention to. It is our chief of violence prevention who looks like uh, is wearing a uniform in the news stories that I've linked in the description, like he's a law enforcement officer and should be carrying a gun. Uh, or even the reporter under Bruin, man, in that county, you can get a concealed carry permit. These folks could have stopped this crime and they had the opportunity to counter ambush. So even if you have an armed guard, you can't outsource your self-protection because they can't protect you in the moment. Right. And sometimes the best ways to prevent violence and things from es is, is to escalate the violence a little bit yourself. Um, it's just by luck that no one was was hurt through this. I, I mean, that was just because the bad guys chose not to do anything else, not because anybody did anything brilliant to prevent it. So uh, so I'm grateful that they didn't do any of that. But, yeah, ideally, you would have had someone behind the bad guys pull a gun and uh, and end the threat. And I, and I will say, I, I film a lot of content, right? And we do that sometimes in public places. And it's hard when you're the talent, when you're on screen in order to pay attention, which is why we have somebody off camera who should be paying attention and should be the one who is in charge of making sure this stuff doesn't happen. Now, I don't know what the armed security guard was doing in the moment, but at this point, the armed security guard then, then kind of comes on camera, gets his gun out, and my guess is here, Steph, that our bad guys have a non-functioning gun of some kind because otherwise, I really feel like our security guard is way behind the eight ball. And my guess also is that he kind of feels like, hey, we're right by City Hall or we're right by the you know police station. We're not gonna have any problems here. And that kind of complacency can get you killed in a hurry. 
Yeah, I mean, there should have been some action, some movement, something. As soon as two guys started making a beeline for you filming, there was no need for guys to walk up to them. That should have immediately alerted them, uh, alerted the security guard that something was going on and that he needed to be paying attention, maybe even hand on guns, something like that to start start figuring out that something isn't right and start figuring out what it is. Unfortunately, it looks like he waited until uh, the cameraman was was already, you know, covered before he did anything at all. And he issues commands here. He doesn't shoot at these guys, which, okay, success covers a multitude of failures, right? But quite frankly, put him at significant risk not to uh, shoot the gun here. Because again, assuming that they won't use it is a bad strategy. Hope is not a tactic, but he did get them to run off. Okay, fine. Sometimes simply the presence of your own firearm is enough. And if that works, that's a victory, right? The cockroaches scurry off and you broke contact. Remember, as a private citizen, your mission is to break contact. If you get that break contact, you win. And, and I think that that needs to be an acceptable victory. Even if maybe we, you know, we wanted more, we got a victory and we should accept it. Yeah, and the, the statistics will bear out that very often just having a gun with you and bringing it into a situation like this will end the fight. I think he, like you, he should have started shooting um, it, rather than issuing commands. But regardless, the presence of a firearm, once again, ended the threat here. And I think that's a great reason to be sure that you follow rule number one, and that is have a gun so that you can cover your ass.